just let go. <laughs> that was pretty cool though. Oh, yeah, it is raining, eh? It's hard to be unwet when you're wet. <laughs> you, you can put that in a fortune cookie. <laughs> There's one, Dave. Again. It's crazy. Hello there guys from the deck of the Miss Katie Ree 2. Dave and I are out. It's late October. Well not super late, but it's late enough. Dave just got one on the sucker. It jumped and flew out. That footage is crazy. You guys just seen that. And I've been casting a tube and I've been casting a crankbait. I just said to Dave, I'm like, I should just put on a regular bondy and just jig. Yeah, because there's a a lot of bait right around us. A lot of activity going on, so and everything was hanging out on bottom, so apparently you made the right call. Yep. So I just threw on regular. That's the first the original Bondi that I think I ever got. I'll give Dave the camera and I'll grab it and try and show you guys. And it's not a huge fish, but it's really cool when you catch them jigging. I mean, it's just cool because they just stop you dead. All right, so here is, this is the very first Bondi that I ever bought from the wife's shop. Let's see if I can get it out of the bag without getting hookied here. And I'll show you guys one of the little mods that Dave and I like to do to our original Bondi. So pretty typical original Bondi, it's got some red on it because it sat probably against a Bulldog or a Medusa. But on the top, <clears throat> Because we're jigging, look what he did to the leader there. We had a little short, I made up that little fluorocarbon and I like to hook this hook right here. And I'll have to look back on the footage. I'm not sure if he was hooked up there or not, Dave. Uh, it was hard to tell. No, I, I don't think he was. I don't remember because he got in the net, so. Yeah. All right, well, we'll back up. We'll have a look at him. I think I'm gonna have to change that leader out. I don't know that I'll trust that. All right. <clears throat> Not a huge one, but pretty still colors. Cool. Oh, his face is bleeding pretty good. Yeah, he he uh, got into that hook hard. He got into her hard, and that's what they do when they hit jigging. Like they just hammer it hard. So let's get him back and let's get some more. Oh. No, go down, comes, down, down. Comes back, attack you. Got this thing jumpy. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Catch you? I don't need a wig. Oh, 
digit. Single digit. Once this hit the, the, the boat, that was. Oh, there he is. Yep. Oh, there he is. I got 30 fucking feet of line out, so we'll let it see what the fuck there. Just the same fish. There's my sucker okay guys, so you just seen that I completely shanked the net job on Dave's last fish. It was a nice tiger. Probably gonna be hard to see from the camera over his head, but it actually had the sucker in its mouth. It was trying to swallow it and it was pumping really hard. It gave Dave a pretty good fight. And the way it turned, our knowledge of the way they react is that it was ready to kind of give up turn come towards the boat and once it's seen the net it went underneath dave's rod hit the side of the boat and it popped off that's totally my fault for just trying to force the net job we're right on top of bait and i just said to dave on the live scope i seen a big cloud of bait off to the side and i was like oh here's a fish coming up after your sucker and dave's like yeah we're we're on yeah and i'll let dave grab it it's another tiger i'm not sure I don't know if it's the same one or not. A little bit smaller maybe, but but he's nice. <coughs> so uh But as far as tigers go, they're always aggressive. Well they're 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 that aggressive. Yeah, that's what Mr. Sucky looks like. So quick shout out to where'd we get the bait, Dave? Fly North Outfitters, Chris and Nicole Rob. Yeah, so if you guys are coming up in this area, you want to get some suckers, you can get them directly from him. If they are around, they're not always around because they're very busy, fly out camps and stuff, but really cool. Nice to have friends that are, you know, in the industry, which we are lucky to have some. It's a nice little tiger. So always cool to be able to get one <laughs> jigging. And then right away on the sucker, it just tells you that you're in the spot, right, Dave? It is, and it's nice because we we haven't seen anything today, and this is the first spot where it's been consistent, and we've had fish, and we've had quite a bit of action in the last little while, so it's been, uh, we're sure missing that net, buddy. Yeah, we are. We're going to have that soon enough. That is a pretty fish. That is. That is a really nice fish. So again, as far as tigers go, it's not super long, but it's a nice but chunky thick. fish. Got the short little tail of a tiger. It's got the big head. Just a, a beautiful little fish. Nothing wrong with that. And those are the nope. kind that we love catching out here. So let's get that one back and uh, we'll get back at it. Welcome back to the cave and another Little Tykes breakdown. And this is kind of a neat spot. It's not a spot that people would expect to see Bait muskies kind of group up prior to the bait fish spawn. So bait fish up here, we're talking ciscos and whitefish. And they're going to spawn in moving water. This has none of that. But what this has is it's a pre-staging spot that we found on this lake. And what we're looking at is this is really the big basin here. And we're just picking kind of a northern shore on it. And what separates this one apart is that this part of the basin here, and we're going to cover stuff like this this winter when we look at areas like this, but in a broader sense, is that we have 
the lake effect current swirls around here, so it kind of swirls that way. If you kind of think of it like that, the lake effect current kind of rolls against this, this shoreline. And what we have here is we have some submerged rocks that are probably, you know, anywhere from four to eight feet underwater along shore. And we have deep breaking shoreline with lots of, you know, nice big cobblestone round rock on it that seems to hold the bait fish. And it seems to be a spot where you get that little bit of lake effect current rolling around there. And because the water temps were still sitting around 53, these bait fish were not really staging at the spots where we would expect them to, to start their spawn. So this time of year, we look for spots like this. And a lot of times in the fall, you hear people talk about bite windows being really tight and really short and, and very effective. What they're talking about is finding areas where the bait fish is concentrated and the muskies will move in. And then there's something, it's the time of day, it's the moon, it's the sun, something triggers a bite window and you have to kind of be on top of those fish. So this day, Dave and I drove around. We actually, we just side scanned and, and scoped a few areas. We weren't seeing bait. We went and fished a couple areas. We weren't seeing a lot. One area, we found some walleyes. I actually hooked into a walleye in a tube. And then we stopped here. And right away, we started seeing a lot of bait all along this basically 15 to 20, 23 foot depth. And we would see bait even out over top of 30 feet. And the first fish that I got, we had made one run up, turn to come back. David got hit somewhere along the shoreline. We turned to come back. And mine, I caught jigging kind of over top of 20 to 24 feet. Right away, we turned the boat. We're coming back this way. Dave got hit. That's the one that I kind of shanked the net job on. We we're sitting over 30 feet of water. And that musky come up from like 25 feet. So they're sitting really deep. And then the one that Dave caught was basically right behind that. So again, we're talking this whole area here is probably the size of a football field to put it in perspective. So it's not very big. It's big enough, but when you're kind of trying to present suckers to these fish as well as jigging or casting tubes, it's actually a pretty small area. And when you find the bait, you want to stick on it. You don't want to be leaving a spot like this to go find something new until you're kind of sure that you've made all the encounters you could possibly have with muskies in an area like that. I know something like this is probably not super valuable to you guys because it just doesn't look like much. It doesn't feel like a lot of information, but this time period where you're trying to find the bait in the fall before we start getting those sub 50 degree water temps which we should be seeing now because we've had a swing in the weather you want to look for spots that have a little bit of lake current or a little bit of wind effect current and find the spots where the bait are starting to kind of school up prior to moving to where they will be spawning and last fall Dave and Kyla and I had a really great day right towards the end of the season we had kind of hit the last big, real tight concentration of bait before they started to disperse out into the water. That video is right here, and it was just a really cool day. It's a day where Kyla got her personal best tiger. It's one that we're going to remember for a long time. And until next time, 54 Bust is out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.